so today we're going to read the story Manfish, a story of Jacques Cousteau by Jennifer Byrd, and it's going to tell us some fun stuff all about the ocean. Bubbles rising through the silence of the sea, silvery beads of breath from a man deep, deep down in a strange and shimmering ocean land of swaying plants and fantastic creatures. A manfish swimming, diving into the unknown, exploring the underwater worlds no one had ever seen and no one could ever imagine. Our story starts many years before in France, with a little boy born under the summer sun. His parents named him Jacques. From the very beginning, little Jacques loved water, the way it felt on his hands, his face, and his body. And water made him wonder. He wondered why ships floated, why he floated, and why rocks sank. One day, Jacques read a story about a man who hid underwater by breathing through a long tube. Jacques tried it and discovered it was impossible. He dreamed that someday he would be able to breathe underwater for real. At night, Jacques dreamed he could fly with the birds among the clouds with his arms outstretched just like wings. Jacques spent his days playing, experimenting, and creating. He wrote little books that he illustrated with his own drawings, and he was fascinated by machines. He studied blueprints and built a model of a crane that was as tall as he was, and it actually worked. Movies fascinated Jacques too. He wanted to know how they were made, how the cameras worked, excuse me, how the cameras worked, and how chemicals made pictures appear on the film. Jacques saved his allowance penny by penny until he had enough to buy a small home movie camera. So some people still use these, but um, a long time ago, before you could take videos on your phone, you had to use some, a video movie camera and you would get something called film that you would have to produce to make the movie. The first thing he did was take it apart and put it all back together. Then he began to film everything around him. He put his brother, cousins, parents, and friends in his movies. He dressed up as a villain with, paint, with a painted on mustache and made some very villainous films. Jacques was always the star, the director, and the writer and usually the cameraman. When Jacques finished school, he joined the French Navy. His ship sailed all around the world and everywhere he went, he filmed what he saw. In China, he filmed men catching fish with their bare hands. They held their breath underwater for many minutes. Jacques wondered what, would, what that would be like. One day at a beach, a friend gave Jacques a pair of goggles with rubber frames and glass to look through. Jacques wore them into the sea. Beneath the water, he was surrounded by silvery green forests of sea plants and fish he had never ever seen before. Everything was silent and shimmering. It was a whole new world. <clears throat> when he came up, he saw cars, people, buildings, and telephone poles. Once again, he, he went below into the magical underwater world. At that moment, Jacques knew his life was changed forever. His eyes had been opened to the wonders of the sea. Jacques and his friends, Philippe and Didi, began to dive together. <clears throat> they experimented to see how long they could stay underwater and how deep they could go. Jacques created a waterproof case for his camera. To film the amazing kingdom, he and his friends were exploring beneath the surface. They made rubber suits to keep themselves warm and flippers to help them kick better. But Jacques wanted to stay down longer than just one breath at a time. He realized he needed to take more air with him enough air to explore the mysterious depths in the vast expanses of the ocean, to swim through the sea as free as a fish. He wanted to become a manfish, and he began to work on just how to do it. On a warm summer day, Jacques stepped into the blue Mediterranean Sea with his new invention. He called it the aqua lung, because aqua means water and our lungs are the part of the body that holds the air we breathe. Below the surface, Jacques swam and glided and dove. He did flips and somersaults. He stood upside down on one finger and laughed bubbles into the sea. Jacques could breathe. Jacques could breathe underwater. He, now he could swim across miles of ocean, his body feeling what only seals had felt, his eyes seeing what only fish had seen. The water made him feel like he was flying, just like in his dreams. Jacques had done it all. He had become a manfish. Jacques was ready to explore the oceans of the world. He needed a boat and he found a big old one. 
a big old wooden navy ship named Calypso. In a year, he turned it from a warship into an explorer ship. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jacques, Philippe, and Didi gathered a crew, their aqualungs, their hopes, and their dreams, and all, they all set off to explore the inside of the sea, to film a world that no one had ever seen before. On, the, on their journeys, they drove deep into a seascape of plants, green and purple and prickly excuse me, green and purple prickly plants, red branchy plants, spongy plants, wispy feathery swaying plants, slow dancing to the rhythms of the sea. They discovered that you could, that plants could feed you, plants that could poison you, plants that looked like fish, and fish that looked like plants. They swam along with giant whales, hitched rides on sea turtles, and made friends with porpoises with shiny eyes and smiling faces. They filmed fierce and frightening sharks, so strange and dangerous that Jacques and his crew had to build cages, not for the sharks, but for themselves, so that they could make their movies without being eaten. Their cameras captured camouflaged scorpion fish as ugly as toads with poisonous spines, Dorado's brilliant shining fish that glowed in the colors of emeralds, sapphires and rubies, checkerboard fish with red and white cheeks, checks from head to tail. Deep down, ooh, this is a fun one, Deep down, they discovered a kingdom of giant rays, fish that fly through the water with wings that swim. They came face to face with a fish as big as a truck, <clears throat> with long fangs, lips like giant tires, and a huge saucer eyes. They called it the truck fish. On the bottom, they found pink ghost crabs with eyes on long stalks buried so deep in the snow or in the sand that they looked like a garden of eyes and flute fish with heads like horses and bodies like bodies the shape of tubes sticking out of rocky openings like pencils in a cup look at all those animals everywhere calypso went jacques and his new and his crew made films of what they saw films that played in movie theaters films that played on tv Millions of people all over the world discovered the wonders of the sea for the very first time with Jacques, Philippe, Didi, and their adventurous crew. After Jacques spent most of his life making movies about the sea, he, <clears throat> he saw something happening, something shocking. Plants that used to be alive and healthy were being poisoned. Fish were sick and dying. Jacques saw that people, without realizing it, were slowly killing the sea and its creatures by dumping garbage and poisonous chemicals into the ocean he loved so much. Jacques knew what he had to do. He had to make movies, movies to warn people, movies to save the sea. Jacques <clears throat> also spoke to presidents, to kings and queens, to people all over the earth, asking them to help save our oceans, our planet. And he spoke to children. Jacques dreamed that someday it would be you exploring worlds never seen, never imagined. Whole new worlds, silent and shimmering. Worlds that are now yours to discover, to care for, and to love. All right, and that's the end. See you tomorrow, water lilies.